Hey guys, happy Friday. Y'all, I think I'm gonna start every word off like this. It is cold in Texas, like really cold. Like it's super cold right now. I think it's like in the 20s here. Guys, I have my living room windows open and when I opened my windows this morning, ice started popping through because the like by me lifting the window, there was ice above it, so it started coming through. Guys, it's cold here in Texas. Can y'all see my Texas cup? I love coffee cups. It's cold here in Texas, okay? And um, this word, who it's for, it's not gonna make it no warmer. Okay, because this is a serious word. I know I start off like, hey guys, it's Friday. That's because I like talking and smiling. And um, yeah, when you're on the good side of God, like when you're pleasing God, you're not worried about the things that the other people are worried about. Cheers. Cheers to you. Y'all know that song for giving me a chance oh somebody give me a mic i'll be your angel yeah y'all don't know nothing about that um somebody better let me sing at their wedding because huh, the guests will be pleased um but cheers let's get into this word as my nose starts to itch holy spirit disclaimer don't ask me no questions in the comments don't 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 come for me in no comments all questions okay all questions, all concerns, all solicitations, take that to God. Take me to God, take this word to God. But if you put a question that, just take it to God. Take it to God. If you don't agree with the word, take it to God. If it makes you angry, take it to God, okay? Take your girl to God. God will vouch for me, okay? I didn't ask to be put in this position. He just chose me, okay? And this imperfect stuttering girl at times when she can't get her words out okay but most of the time i can get my words out but he chose this imperfect person he chose me i didn't choose myself for this this walk is stressful but when you pick up your cross and walk that thing is heavy okay so mm -hmm. guys this is so good this is peanut butter and jelly flavored coffee, which may sound disgusting to you guys, but it's peanut butter and jelly favorite flavored coffee. And I put brown sugar, vegan creamer in it. It's so good. It's so good. Mm -hmm. If you guys have a Keurig, try Mods, M-A-U-D-S, Mods Coffee. They have some really good flavors. I love their PB&J flavored coffee. I like their blueberry flavored coffee. Um, they have so many flavor, banana flavored coffee, and it's good. Mods, M-A-U-D-S. And if you order it from Amazon, you can get a box of like 50 different like assorted K-Cups for like 30 bucks, which you know, if you go to the stores now, K-Cups are like $20 for 12, okay? So mods, M-A-U-D-S. Thank me later, but also try comments here that I shared with you guys in the comment section if you like coffee. It's like an ice cube, coffee cube. You put the ice cube in your cup, fill it with hot water, and you got you a gourmet cup of coffee. So try either one of those. Let me stop rambling because it's at three minutes and your girl could just talk because y'all are my friends. Some of y'all, not all of y'all, some of y'all. Um, but I love all of y'all with the love of the Lord. But sometimes I just miss y'all and I just want to talk. So yeah, okay. Let's get into the serious word. Let me stop playing. So, I had this dream in the wee hours of this morning. And when I woke up from the dream, I heard the Lord say, by the power vested in me, as in him. He said, by the power vested in me. I heard that loud and clear, okay? So let's get into this dream and I'm getting really hot and it's not hot in here. It's actually really cold. Holy Spirit. Um, let's get into this word. Um, so in this dream, I was in a house and it's like I was like a watchman. So I was there, but I wasn't there. Like I could see what's going on, but nobody's talking to me, if that makes sense. And I knew I was in the house of a husband and a wife, like their, their home for their family. 
the husband was sleeping in one room and the wife was sleeping in one room. And I also knew in the dream that the husband had a mistress. Like he was dating around, like the husband and the wife living in this house were about to get a divorce, but the man was already um, with the mistress. He was already with somebody else, okay? And I could tell in the dream, he was cold hearted towards his wife, okay? And this was a black couple, always our people. Just kidding, I'm not racist, I'm black, Never mind. whatever. It was our people, y'all, for my African-American people. So that's who I saw in the dream. It was us. But this is for all nationalities, okay? But I'm standing in the living room, and the husband comes out of his room. The wife comes out of her room, and uh, she's like, our daughter is missing. And she walks out of the door to go look for the daughter, and the husband's just standing there. Again, I could tell by his demeanor, he's really cold-hearted towards her. Like, they're going through a divorce, separate rooms. He's dibbling and dabbling with the mistress. Okay, the wife walks out the door after she says, our daughter is missing. So she comes back in the house, and she's like, our daughter is missing. Like, I can't find her or whatever. And the husband's like, stop playing. He laughed a little bit. He's like, stop playing. Where's my daughter? And she's like, our daughter is missing. And all of a sudden, this big man, and the, the husband I'm referring to, he's a big man. Like, he's super tall and, like, buff. He starts crying, and he drops down to the floor. And when he dropped down to the floor, he turned into a woman. And he had on all gray, and his boobs were really big. Like, he just turned into a big woman, okay? And he began to wail on the floor, okay? And that was the end of the dream. Okay, when I woke up from the dream, I heard by the power vested in me, by the power vested in me. Okay, I also, um, let me actually, let me get into this interpretation. But when I woke up, I heard by the power vested in me. So let me tell you how the Lord broke this dream down to me. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Whoever this is for, if you're, this could be whoever's, whoever this is for is going to watch this word. Okay. And a lot of women that are in the middle of a divorce and your husband has a mistress and he's already dating and seeing someone, okay? But God has told you your husband is your husband, okay? This is going to resonate with you. But there's also some men that are going to watch this movie and you're the man with the mistress and you and your wife are going through a divorce, okay? God is not pleased. So catch this. Um... The Lord said, by the power vested in me, okay, by the power vested in me. And you guys know when a man, a uh, ordained minister is marrying a couple off, he says, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. Okay, God said that power is vested in him. Okay, he is the one that ordained and married the two of you, whoever this is for. By the power vested in him, the word vested, guys, means fully and unconditionally, never ending, uh, doesn't matter the conditions, fully and unconditionally guaranteed as a legal right, benefit, or privilege. God says fully vested in me is what I heard him say. He says he is the one who has the legal right, the unconditional guarantee, the benefit, the privilege to put you two together, not man, and he's the one that did it, okay? And who he brings together, let no man separate. He does not care if man stamps divorce on your papers, okay? He said, um, by the power vested in me, okay? He is the one that has the power to marry you. He's the one that ordained that marriage, not the minister that stood in front of you, okay? Therefore, what he brings together, let no man separate. Now, what we bring together, there's a chance of separation, but what he brings together, he says, what I bring together, let no man separate it. He said, um, by the power vested in me, he has the legal right to put that marriage together. He is the one who put that marriage together, and that marriage is to stand whether um, or not, whatever the situation is, okay, unconditionally. That means there's no conditions, okay? He brought that marriage together and it will stand. And if you are a woman that is in a relationship with someone who is married, okay, you can't be someone's girlfriend who's, who's already married. That man has a wife. God is not pleased. 
if you are the man that is separated and getting a divorce from your wife uh, that God put together and you, you have a little mistress, okay? The Lord is showing by this dream, uh, you're about to have some great days, okay? Let me get into the interpretation because I don't want to preach at y'all. Okay, I was in a house, obviously, you know, the house represented the covering, okay? The house can also represent the person's heart, but it was a married person's, a married couple's um, house, okay? Okay, their covering of this house uh, that I was in, their covering was the Lord, okay? It's a three-strand cord, and that cord is not easily broken, okay? So I'm in the living room watching this take place. The living room is an open place in the house. It's where things are exposed. So prophetically, a living room is a place of exposure. The man and woman, they're sleeping in separate rooms. They're getting a divorce. I knew in the dream that the man's heart was hardened towards his wife. He just had like a stinky attitude, okay? I knew like he, whatever he was getting from this mistress, this man was popped up, puffed up on arrogance. He had a hardened heart towards his wife, okay? He was a whole pharaoh towards his wife. And this was a big man. This man had to be like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, muscular, okay? He comes out of the room. She comes out of the room, okay? Again, the Lord is showing whoever this uh, this couple is, if it's for you, this is a marriage that by the power vested in him, he pronounced y'all man and wife and that marriage will not be broken, okay? But, but the man is about to be broken, okay? Whoever the cheating party is in this marriage, this could be for a woman too, is about to be broken. But he showed me this um, from a woman's perspective. So I saw the man, okay? Um, that, that marriage is not easily broken, but the man is about to be broken down, okay? So anyway, um, they both come out of the room. The woman comes from one side of the house, the man comes from another, okay? The woman's like, our daughter is missing. And she just walks out of the door as if she's looking for the daughter. The man just stood there, okay? And as I'm standing there watching him, he almost had like a nonchalant look on his face. Like he didn't care. He was just standing there. Um, it, it was almost a sense of arrogance, okay? So the wife goes outside. She's looking for the daughter. She, she comes back. She's like, our daughter's missing. And he laughs. He's like, <laughs> stop playing. Where's my daughter? And she's like, our daughter's missing. She's telling him like the daughter's missing. And immediate, actually, let me, before I even go on, uh, whoever this is for, whoever the cheating party is in this marriage um, that thinks you're getting away by, by dating, having a mistress, you're getting everything you want and you need from this other woman, okay? God is about to take something out of your life. Um, something is about to go missing in your life that's really near and dear to your heart, okay? Something is about to go missing, when something goes missing, it means it can't be found, okay? It's lost. No one knows how to locate it. Something very near and dear is about to hit this person in the worst way possible, okay? In this dream, it was a child, so it was something that this husband and this wife um, conceived together. It's something they birthed together, okay? It, it's a gift from God. The Lord is saying, whoever this is for, this cheating party in this dream, okay, and of course, both parents are going to feel it, but it's going to hit this person who decided to go outside of the will of God very hard. Something near and dear to you in your life is about to go missing, and it's going to bring you to your knees because you chose to walk outside of the will of God. And God said, by the power vested in me, as in him, he pronounced you man and wife. So what you are doing, you will not get away with it. You're about to be brought to your knees, okay? The man immediately, this big, tall, buff man, after he realized the wife was serious, our, da our daughter's missing, he drops to his knees and he starts crying and he has on all gray and his boobs are big. He looks like an oversized woman, okay? The Lord by this part is saying a lot of these men that this is for, they're about to feel labor pains like a woman, okay? The same pain, if you're a brother that's watching this and this is for you, the same pain that you made that woman go through 
with all your shenanigans and this cheating, stepping outside of your marriage, choosing to um, break what God has put together, you're about to feel birthing pains like a woman, okay? And we're gonna back this up with scripture, but he says the way you're about to cry because of what he's, um, what's about to go missing in your life, you're going to be like a woman on her knees wailing, okay? You're gonna be like a pregnant woman. That whole buff, puffed up, arrogant, mighty, uh, he-man attitude is going to look totally different when whatever God um, snatches out of your life hits, okay? You're, you're going to be a totally different person. This person, <laughs> you're not going to be this tall, mighty, strong man anymore. It's, it's about to hurt. It's going to really put on, pull on your heartstrings, okay? It's going to really pull on your heartstrings. When something near and dear to you goes missing and you can't find it, there is no peace. And y'all better listen to this spiritually. When you can't find peace, when you can't find rest, okay? When you can't find the things that you concede that you... You're about to be brought to your knees, whoever this is for. And if there's a man watching this and you know that this is you, repent, turn to God, Stop the shenanigans because the pain that you're going to feel, this big 6'4 muscular man dropped to his knees and began to cry. And his boobs were huge. His, his boobs looked like a, a pregnant mom's boobs or like a mom after she gives birth and her, her tits are like full of milk. Like they were huge. He turned into a big woman and began to wail. Okay. And he had on all gray. He, he had on like an all gray outfit. Um, for this part, when I was asking God, like, why did he have on all gray? This song literally started to play in my head. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Y'all better know that song. A lot of people know that song. Okay, that's the song the Lord dropped in my spirit, okay? Uh, whoever this is for, you're about to see some really gray, dark days, okay? Because of what's um, being taken away from you, okay? Y your, your happiness, your sunshine, that puffiness, that thing is about to be brought to the floor. You're about to see some really gray days. What God has brought together and let no man separate. Now, what you bring together, that's different. But when he brings it together, God said, clear as day when I woke up by the power vested in me. I typed it in my phone. It was like five in the morning. I heard it by the power vested in me. Vested fully and unconditionally, meaning without conditions, no matter what's going on, guaranteed as a legal right, benefit, or privilege. God said, by the power vested in him. Okay, you're about to see some really great days. And for you women that are dating someone who's married and you think God told you that's your husband, child, please, you can't be a married man's girlfriend. And God is not a God of disorder. If this is for a woman, you're about to see some great days too. This is not just for a man, but um, God put it this way in my dream. I can't control my dreams. I saw the man, this big old puffed up man hit the floor. Things are about to go missing. Missing peace, missing sleep, missing whatever God is about to take from these, these people. And this is for several people, not just one or two. It's going to make you hit the floor. It's going to make them hit the floor. Okay? That puffed up arrogance, <laughs> that thing is going to melt away and hit the floor because of what they're about to feel. The two scriptures the Lord led me to for this word is Jeremiah 30 verses 5 through 6. And I'm reading from the NIV version, but I'm also going to read it in the message version. The NIV says, this is what the Lord says. Cries of fear are heard. Terror, not peace. Ask and see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor, every face turned deathly pale? Needs no explanation. 
uh, the message version says, cries of panic are being heard. The peace has been shattered. Ask around, look around. Can men bear babies? So why do I see all these he-men? Guys, a he-man is a well-built muscular man, a macho man, a strong man, okay? So why do I see all these he-men holding their bellies like a woman in labor? Faces contorted, messed up, <laughs> pale as death. The blackest of days, no day like it ever. A time of deep trouble for Jacob, but he will come out of it alive. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 13, verses 6 through 8. I'm going to read the New Life version as well as the Message version. It says, cry out in sorrow, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come as a destroying power from the all-powerful. So all hands will become weak and every man's heart will melt. They will be filled with fear. Pain and suffering will take hold of them. They will suffer like a woman giving birth. They will look surprised at one another, their faces burning. Message version. Well, means cry, scream. Well, God's day of judgment is near. An avalanche crashing down from the strong God. Everyone paralyzed in panic, hysterical and unstrung, doubled up in pain like a woman giving birth to a baby. Horrified, everyone they see is like a face out of a nightmare. Isaiah 13 verses 6 through 8 and Jeremiah 30 verses 5 through 6. If you want to read it, read it on your own. Needs no explanation. God said what he said. Don't comment. Well, da -da -da, I, just don't comment the nonsense. Not today, y'all. I don't got no time. I don't got no time. Okay? Questions, concerns, take it to him. If you don't like what's said, take it to him. He says, by the power vested in me. He's the one that brought that marriage together, not man. And a man cannot stamp a divorce on a paper. God has to give that divorce the final say in the spirit. It doesn't matter what man, what man does in the natural. A judge cannot stamp a divorce. If God did not divorce you in the spirit, it's still, um, you're still married in the natural. You have to get permission from God. He says, by the power vested in him unconditional power, legal authority. He did that thing. Brother, whoever this is, um, th if this is for you, you can't have a mistress or a girlfriend when you're married, honey. You're, you're married. And the woman is silly if she thinks she's your girlfriend to a married man. And that mistress is in just as much trouble as you are if you're the man that this is for. This could also be for a woman. If you're married, you can't have a boyfriend. There, there's no such thing. And who this word is for, this is a marriage God brought together. You didn't bring this together. The house I, I was standing in, the covering I was under, that was God's covering over that marriage. His unconditional covering. By the power vested in him, he pronounced you man and wife. A three-strand cord is not easily broken. You can't just break up stuff because you, you, you get tired of your wife or you see something more exciting. You don't have that power. But what's about to go missing in your life is near and dear to you and it's going to bring you to your knees. You can sleep in different rooms, different parts of the house. You can treat the person nasty, whatever. God has the last say. And he said what he said. He said, by the power vested in him, I heard it loud and clear. I was not dreaming. Okay. Um, and again, I heard the You Are My Sunshine song. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. And the Lord gave me that song when I asked, like, why was a man in all gray? Th th whoever this is for, they're about to see some gray days. Gray days means dark. The, the sky turns gray when it's about to like storm. In case you guys were wondering. Don't shoot the messenger. Um, that's the word. And um, 
I didn't even know I was going to release this. So earlier this week, the Lord gave me a dream and my sister Crystal, I was in a church and my sister Crystal was in like, there was a room in the church with like a bed and stuff or whatever. And I went in the room, my sister Crystal was just laying in the bed. So I left out, I went to do some other stuff in the church. And when I came back into the room, a man was in her room under the covers. They were both hiding under the covers and I knew that they were having sex. And I was so disgusted because I'm like, they're literally having sex in the church. So I like said something to Crystal and I slammed the door and walked out and she came out screaming at me. And she was like, don't judge me. She goes, don't judge me. You're the one, excuse me. She goes, don't judge me. You're the one who was, who was dating someone in jail. And I looked at her. I said, no, I wasn't. I said, that was you. And she knew that I was correct in the dream. So she stormed back in the room, right? And that was the end of that dream. And what the Lord uh, showed me when I woke up, what he spoke to me is that when you commit adultery in your marriage that he brought together, it's just as bad as you having open sex in his church. You are defiling his church. And we are the church. You are defiling something that he brought together. You are defiling his church. And it doesn't matter how much you try to cover it up. When I walked in the room, Crystal and the man were under the covers having sex. They were under this blue cover, this blue comforter, okay? And they tried to hide themselves. Like neither one of them wanted to come from under the covers. They tried to hide. But God is saying he sees everything. And what you're doing, if you're a person that's committing adultery against your husband or your wife or whatever, that is the same thing to God as if you're having open sex in his church house because you are defiling his church. You are defiling what he brought together. You are defiling his temple and he is not happy. And when she ran out of the room and she said, you're the one dating someone in jail. I said, no, I'm not. That's you. She was like, you were, you were the one dating someone in jail or prison or whatever. I said, no, that was you. What God is showing by this part is that those committing adultery and stepping outside of they, their marriage, um, they look at their spouse, the one who's during this time drawing so close to God, regardless of what the person is going through in that marriage, they're drawing so closer to God. The the husband or the wife who that's cheating feels like the other party is in prison because we choose to walk with God. We choose to take the narrow path. And they feel like the adultery that they're committing, it's fun to them. They're getting a high off of it. They feel like they're living the life. And they look at us, the ones who draw near to God during the time um, of separation. I know that when I was going through a divorce with my ex-husband, even after the divorce, I drew so closer to God while he was still out living his life had gotten remarried and everything, okay? And they looked at us as the, the ones that are in bondage, in jail, because we choose to take the narrow path. And our lives may look boring. It may look like we're not, we're not moving, like we're, we're in place. But we're not in jail. We're not under bondage. We're, we're choosing to take the narrow way. And I hope this is making sense. It's way too early, guys. But we choose to take the narrow way. And they look at the people that choose to take the narrow path and follow God's commands as a prison sentence. It's not a prison sentence to us. It's eternal life. But when they're connected to darkness and Satan is feeding them all of these lies, they literally think the life that they're living is it. And they look at us as being connected to a prison cell. No, we have eternal life. What you're doing, what they're doing, is putting them in prison. They're in a bondage. They're in prison. They're enslaved. We're not. But they look at us in that manner, if that makes sense. So that's why she said, you are the one um, dating someone in prison or jail, whatever she said in the dream. And I said, no, that's you. If you're on the other side of this and you're the woman that's standing for your marriage and your husband is the, the cheating spouse, keep drawing near to God. I don't care how boring they may look at it, how, how the other party feels about it, keep drawing near to God. You have eternal life. They look like they're living the high life with this other person, but your husband, honey, or if this is for a man, your wife is about to feel birthing pains. 
they're about to have something snatched away from them, something go missing that's near and dear to their hearts that's going to bring them to the floor. God said by this dream, he said, the one I just gave you, he said, literally, them committing adultery is like having sex in the church house. It's defiling his temple, his church, what he has deemed righteous. It's defiling it. It's making it unclean. So that's the word, y'all. And I knew why he used my sister, Crystal. I actually have a sister in Christ. I'm not going to say who she is, but she is going through a divorce and her husband is... Um, in a relationship with a girl named Crystal. So I woke up knowing that, knowing, knowing that the dream was for her, but it's not just for her. So that's the word, y'all. I'm going to get off here because I feel like I've been struggling with this word to get the words out. It's early. This is literally the first thing that I'm doing this morning. I haven't even logged into my computer system to work. Um, so I'm going to let y'all go. Whoever this is for, that's the word. By the power vested in God. God said, by the power vested in me. He married this marriage. He put this marriage together. Married this marriage. I cannot. I'm getting off here, guys. But I love y'all. Have a great Friday.